If you're a data professional who works with Excel, let's be honest, that's all of us, the tools I'm about to show you will completely revolutionize the way that you work. And the crazy thing is that 99% of Excel users, even those self-proclaimed experts, have no idea that they even exist. We're talking about Excel's insanely powerful business intelligence tools, Power Query, Power Pivot, Data Model, and DAX. I'm about to show you exactly how you can use these tools to work smarter and faster than you've ever worked before. And the best part is that these are free native Excel tools that anyone can learn. So close your eyes and imagine you just got hired as an analyst for Maven Electronics, a global retailer that sells TVs, computers, appliances, things like that. Now it's 4 p.m. on a Friday, you're about to unplug for the weekend when the VP of sales sends you the dreaded urgent email. The quarterly sale call is first thing Monday morning and she needs you to gather some data and build a brand new report for regional sales managers. They'll need to see monthly revenue trending, sales by product category, and breakdowns for each individual country. And to make things even tougher, it turns out that the data is all over the place. Transactional records live in a SQL database, product details are in a CSV file, and for some crazy reason, George from IT exported the list of store locations as a static PDF. Now, this is the moment where the average Excel user would either curl up into the fetal position and cry, or hunker down for hours of mind-numbing tedious work. But we are not the average user. We are power users. And we're going to use the tools at our disposal to knock out this report, earn some serious cred with our VP, and still have enough time to clock out by five. So let's fire up Excel and get this thing done. All right, so here we are in a brand new blank Excel workbook. And the first thing we're going to do is use Power Query to extract, transform, and load data from all of our different sources. Now here's the key, instead of manually copying and pasting data into worksheets, Power Query is going to allow us to create data connections and build automated workflows that we can apply with the click of a button. So let me give you a rundown of how this works. We're going to head to the Data tab, and here in the Get Data menu, this is where you'll find all of those Power Query connections. Let's start by grabbing our transactional records, our sales data, which live in a SQL Server database. All I need to do is drop in my database details, Press OK. That's going to pull up a preview window where I can see all of the data stored in that table or that database schema. So now I'm going to press Transform Data. That's going to take me into the query editor. And this is where I can explore the data, see exactly what I'm working with. I can apply filters, sorting logic, add columns, transform fields, and load this data into Excel for further analysis. So you can see we've got order numbers, we've got line items for different products sold, order dates, delivery dates different key columns for customers, stores, or products that will allow us to relate this table to different lookup or dimension tables. We've got a quantity field and currency code as well. Now, one thing I love to do is in the view menu, I like to activate the column quality and distribution fields. That gives you a quick glance at the frequency distribution, as well as the percent of valid records or empty or error values as well. So one thing that jumps out, we see a lot of empty values for a delivery date, and as we scroll through, this actually makes sense. So the company sells some products in brick and mortar stores where there is no delivery, and they also run an online store, which is store key number zero. And in those cases, we do see a delivery date. So nothing concerning there. We can also view some additional details and summary stats by activating the column profile pane. So here for order number, you can see a quick glance at some of those key statistics. By default, these are based on the first thousand rows, but I can click to change this to base on the entire data set. And this gives me some really helpful information at a glance. So for instance, I can see that we're dealing with 26,326 distinct order numbers here. So obviously a lot deeper that we could go here, but that looks good for now. We're gonna name this table sales, head to home, close and load to. And this is the key. Instead of dumping this data into an Excel worksheet, we're just going to create a connection to that data source and we're going to add it into Excel's data model. So let's press OK. That's going to fire up the queries and connections pane. And you can see we've got 62,884 rows or records loaded. Next up, let's grab our product data. Remember that came from a CSV file. So let's go ahead to from file, text CSV. Here's our product data right here. Let's click import. Again, we get this preview pane that gives us a quick glance at the first 200 rows of data. And again, we're going to click transform to open up the query editor. 
So this table contains all of the information that we need to know about products. We've got a unique product key. This is a primary key column. We've got product names, brands, colors, the cost and price in USD, and also information about subcategories and categories as well. So again, I'd like to do a little bit of column profiling here. We can see basically the distribution of products by category. So this company sells computers, TV and video equipment, audio gear, cameras and camcorders, and same story for subcategories as well. Great way to just get a quick understanding or profile of the data that we're working with. So this is looking good. Data types and headers look good. Table name is products, which looks good. Let's head to home, close and load to. Same story, just a connection, add to data model, press OK. And there we go, we've got 2,500 product rows loaded. Next, we need our store level detail, which remember, George from IT saved as a static PDF file for some reason, but that's no problem for Power Query. We're going to grab some data from PDF, point to that store PDF file and import. And here in the preview pane, you can see that Excel is identifying tables of data contained within that PDF. It's also kind of taking snapshots of each page. So we've got a two page PDF captured here. And what I'm going to do is select the entire folder and click transform to pull all of this data into that query editor. Now, just a couple steps I need to do to get this into the format that I need. For one, we don't need both the tables and the snapshots. We really just need the two tables so we can filter those pages out. And this button is going to expand this to show us all of the data contained in those tables. So you can see from the preview, we've got our store key, country, and state. Let's right click, remove the other columns. And the next thing I'm going to do is promote this first row because that contains our header information. So from the home menu, I can click use first row as headers and boom, we've got store key, country and state. This contains all of our different stores and where they're located, including our online shop. I can name this table stores and you know the drill, close and load to. Just a connection, add to data model, press OK. And just like that, we've turned our static PDF into a 67 row table right here inside of our Excel data model. Now, last but not least, remember, I want to be able to filter and segment our sales data by different date parts, right? I want to look at revenue trending by month. Maybe I want quarter or year. And the proper way to do that is to create a dedicated calendar table containing the same date range as our sales table. So a little shortcut to do that, I can right click and actually duplicate that sales query, that's going to open up a duplicate copy right here in the query editor. And check this out. All I'm going to do is keep the order date from this column, remove everything else, remove all of the duplicates so that I have a unique list of sequential dates in this table. Let's name this column date. We'll name the table calendar. And now I can enhance this table and add columns with any additional date field that I'd like to use for filtering. So to do that, I can add to add column. Power Query has all these amazing out of the box date tools. So for instance, I could pull in the name of the day. I could pull in the week starting date. I could pull in the start of the month. I could pull in quarters. I could pull in the year. You get the idea. So that's looking pretty good. I've got my month field for my revenue trending chart. So let's go back to home, close and load. Get this one added as well. Boom, now we've got four tables and our work with Power Query is complete. Now our next stop is Excel's data model. So let's head to the Power Pivot tab and we're gonna click Manage under Data Model. This is gonna open up a dedicated data model window. This is where we can store and compress huge amounts of data. We don't have that row limitation that we get in worksheets. And more importantly, this is where we can create table relationships and models to blend the data together without having to use complex worksheet formulas like XLOOKUPs or index match. So we can see our data here. We can get a quick preview in tabs, but the real magic happens in the diagram view. And check this out. We've got our sales data, which is our fact table or data table. And we have those three dimension tables that we loaded up with Power Query, products, stores, and calendar. And blending or merging this data together is as simple as selecting the primary keys from our dimension tables, like product key, and connecting them to the foreign keys in our sales table. So product key connects to product key, store key connects to store key, and date connects to order date. 
This creates one-to-many relationships between the four tables in our relational model and allows us to access data from all of these different tables in one place without writing a single formula. So that's the data model. We can go ahead and close that window to get back into our worksheet. Let's close the queries and connections pane here. And our next stop is power pivot. So what I'm gonna do here is insert a new pivot table from our data model. I'm gonna drop it right here into cell A1. And look at this, we've got that familiar intuitive drag and drop pivot table interface, except now it's sitting on top of our entire multi-table data model, not just a single table or cell range. And because we've created those table relationships in our model, it means that we can access fields from any of these tables. For instance, we can look at the sum of quantity from our sales table and break that down in different ways, like product category, like so, or subcategory as well. And this works exactly like a traditional pivot table, right? Maybe we wanna break this down by different countries, right? We can pull country from our store table as filters and take a look at how these metrics compare for different territories. We can add slicers and pivot charts as well, just like we normally would, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. Now we're on to our final step here, our final power tool, which is using DAX or data analysis expressions. That's the language that we can use to define new calculated columns and measures to enhance our data model instead of the traditional cell formulas that we typically use if our data was stored in worksheets. So right now, all we have in our sales data is quantity. That's really the only quantitative field that we're able to analyze right now. But remember that the VP wants us to track revenue and order quantity as well. So that means we need to define some new calculations, some calculated fields or measures to produce the values that we need. And this is where DAX comes into play. So I'm gonna to head to Power Pivot. You can see this measures option here. I'm gonna create a new DAX measure. It's gonna live in my sales table. And the first one I wanna create is a measure called total orders. And this is where I can write that DAX code to define the measure. And if I wanna calculate total orders, what I need is the distinct count of the order number from our sales table. So I can tab that in, close the parenthesis, check the formula, looks good, and we can format that, let's say, as a whole number with a separator. Press OK. That's going to drop in total orders right here into our pivot table. So let's go ahead and pull some of quantity out. And we're going to add one more measure here. This one's a little bit more complicated but we need to calculate revenue somehow. So let's call this one total revenue. And the challenge here is that we have order quantities in our sales table, but the product price, which is required to calculate revenue, lives in our product table. But DAX is an incredibly powerful language, and we can use an iterator function like sumx to basically say, I wanna sum records from our sales table, and the expression that I wanna evaluate on every single row is the quantity, times the related unit price from our product table. So for each row in our sales table, we're multiplying the quantity value by the related unit price for that given product from the product table, and then we're adding up the results across all of our records. So let's close off two parentheses, check that formula, looks good. Let's do currency, round it off, press OK. And there we go, now we have the actual total revenue sold broken down by subcategory and category, filtered by country. And now we have all of the information that we need for this report. We've connected to those disparate data sources, we've created table relationships to model it all together and merge that information, we've used DAX to enhance that model with calculated measures, and we're using Power Pivot to explore that data in different ways. Now to take things to the finish line, let's dress this up a little bit. Let's add some data viz and turn this into an interactive report that the sales team can use for their Monday meeting. So I'm gonna clear out category and subcategory, actually clear country out too. And remember we want revenue by month. So let's pull start of month onto rows, pull orders out. And here we get a revenue trend by month. So let's go ahead and insert a pivot chart here. We we'll use a line chart. And I like to clean things up a little bit, we can get rid of those field buttons, get rid of the total legend, add a title here, monthly revenue. And that's looking pretty good. Right away, I can see some patterns emerging. And what we can even do is add another pivot table here, insert pivot from data model, drop it right here in column D. 
And for this pivot, we can actually look at the total orders. That's the measure we created, broken down by product categories on rows. And let's go ahead and sort that descending by order volume. And why don't we add a pivot chart? We can do a simple bar chart here. That's going to show order volume at the product category level. Not worried too much about formatting right now. We could certainly polish this up later. But same story, let's get rid of those field labels, get rid of the legend, give it a more descriptive title, like orders by category. And little trick here, let's right click that axis and reverse the categories so that we've got the highest order volume categories at the top of the chart. We can actually get rid of that X axis and we can add some data labels here. And now remember, we wanted to show the monthly revenue trend and the orders by category for each country individually. So a nice way to do that would be to add a visual slicer here. So let's select a cell on our first pivot table, go to the field list, and let's look for that country field. And I'm gonna right click, add it as a slicer, just drop it right here for now. And what I can do in that slicer menu is connect it to both of our pivot tables here so that it will control both our line chart and our bar chart. And I can actually hide the raw data itself to clean things up. Maybe we get rid of the grid lines as well. And now check this out. We've got a nice little interactive dashboard that's showing the monthly revenue trend and the orders by category for each individual country. Obviously, we could do a bit more formatting and polish here, but pretty amazing that we're able to go from raw data to interactive report in really just a matter of minutes. So there you have it. In under 20 minutes, we just accomplished what would take most Excel users hours, if not days of work. Plus we built a solution that's fast, flexible, and scalable. This is why these tools are absolute game changers for data professionals and why every Excel user should add them to their toolkit. Now, if you'd like to learn more, check out our award-winning self-paced courses and guided projects at Maven Analytics and start creating your personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.